Right, this is Engine Behind the Power, and tonight we have a gentleman by the name of Mr. Sami Waititu. He's the chief principal of the Paramount Chief Kinyanjui Technical Training Institute, and he's here to talk about his life and his work. Karibu sana. Okay. Welcome to KBC. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about what you do, first of all. What is it that you do at the school, and what? tell us about the school first where we know you from right now. Okay, as you have just mentioned, I'm Sami Kamau Waititu. Mm -hmm. I'm the principal of Paramount Chief, Kenyanjui Technical Training Institute. Mm -hmm. It is located right here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. in the satellite, satellite area. Mm -hmm. And um, we are a government institution. Okay. You know the name may sound like it is a private one. Right. So PC Kinyanjui is a government institution. Mm -hmm. It was started in 1979 mm -hmm. as a technical high school. Mm -hmm. That time we used to have technical high schools right. that, that were running from Form 1 to Form 4. Mm -hmm. Later in 1984, with the, with the coming of the 844 system, mm -hmm. the PC Kinyanjui converted to a college, okay. a technical training institute mm -hmm. admitting Form 4 students. All right. So we train at diploma and certificate levels. Mm -hmm. So our main clients are from four of us. And what kind of, what kind of courses do you offer? What kind of uh, training do you like to offer to your, to your students? So we offer quite a wide range of courses. For example, we have engineering courses. Mm -hmm. In engineering, we have building and civil engineering. We have electrical engineering, mm -hmm. automotive engineering, and mechanical engineering. Okay. That is engineering. Okay. Then we have hospitality. Mm -hmm. In hospitality, we have food and beverage. Mm -hmm. We have catering and accommodation. Mm -hmm. We also have tourism management. Mm -hmm. Again, we have the ICT. Mm -hmm. We train um, information communication technology. Mm -hmm. We also offer com computer sciences. Okay. Then we have business courses. Mm -hmm. And we also have, um, we have applied sciences. In applied sciences, we have applied chemistry, applied biology, so a food technology, range, a, wide a wide range of courses. In fact, any, every Kenyan can get a course in PC Kenyan Fantastic, fantastic. We have also introduced agriculture. Oh, wow. Fantastic. To meet the, the big four the agenda big four of agenda. food security. That's great. Yes. Now tell us a little bit about yourself and is this um, a role? As, as the chief principal of, yes. of such an institution. Mm -hmm. Is it for you um, uh, any other job, you know? Or is there any other motivation behind um, you pursuing this line of career? Mm, I have been passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. In fact, many people will say I went to teaching as a second option. Mm -hmm. I have been, my intention right from the beginning was to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I articulated this by right from when I was very young. Mm -hmm. I used to coach my younger, my younger brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. From then, I, as I went through school, mm -hmm. I would coach my friends in what I was good in. Mm -hmm. I would also be coached in the areas they were, they were better in. Right. So for me, teaching came as a natural, as a very natural thing. Right. I started teaching when I was quite, quite young. Mm -hmm. When I was about, when I was 20. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Yes, yeah, so, uh -huh. and I, I have been teaching All throughout through. my life. My goodness. Yes. So, is it important for anyone who's considering a career in teaching? Mm -hmm. Or is it important for anyone who aims to function at a high level in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the entire uh, career of teaching? Is it important for them to have the same kind of passion? It is important. Mm -hmm. Any job that you do, for you to perfect it, you have to have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. If you go to any job for, for the sake of it, mm -hmm. or for lack of something else that, to do, that you can do, mm -hmm. then you'll do, definitely not perform. It has been um, a, criti a critique of yes. the Kenyan education sector yes. that progressively, as, as times go by and as generations come and go, mm -hmm. uh, the, the integrity of, of the, the Kenyan teacher Mm -hmm. seems to go down, their passion, their drive, their, their commitment to the work appears to be going down. What have you got to say to such a critique? Mm, I cannot talk for every other teacher. From your observation. But I would say to a large extent, mm -hmm. teachers without defending them, they are, they are quite accountable. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. 
because they are they are being watched by such a huge crowd every other minute their performance is being checked every other time through through the end of term tests through final exams mm -hmm. and their results are in most cases are broadcast mm -hmm. nationally mm -hmm. so we we cannot miss one or two again remember we have thousands i think around 400,000 teachers mm -hmm. so you cannot miss 10 or 20 wayward ones okay. but i believe to a large extent teachers are one of the people the professionals who are most closely watched okay. who are most cross grossly monitored mm -hmm. and so by and by you cannot miss a you will hear about it when All it right. happens All right. but to a large extent they are i understand that yes uh, you you went through Kenyan schools as yes a, you know uh, yes as, uh, as throughout student, my schooling time and and now as a teacher yes you have the benefit of having experienced both sides of the of the conversation yes about education first as a student as many others and now as a teacher yes what have you got to say to the question or to the discussion or debate around the quality of Kenyan schools in regard to their ability to bring out uh, uh, candidates or rather uh, Kenyans that are qualified for the job market, the dynamic job market mm. that exists right now? Uh, I would say there is, we are doing quite well, but there is a huge room for improvement. Mm -hmm. But going by our, looking at our trainees mm -hmm. or our graduates at all the levels, mm -hmm. we have had Kenyans who have excelled both in, in Kenya and outside there. That speaks a lot about the quality of our education system. Mm -hmm. Because if we can have a Kenyan mm -hmm. who has gone through our system and excelled internationally, mm -hmm. then I think that, that speaks volume okay. of our quality of education. Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of improvement that can be done. Mm -hmm. We need to work on our curriculum, maybe review it on a more regular basis, mm -hmm. which has been lacking. Okay. But I believe that one is being improved every other, every other day. Now, I'm, I'm looking at your, I mean, the, the main website of your institution, and I can look at uh, the kind of the departments that you have. Yes. And uh, we're looking at applied sciences, uh, building and civil construction, uh, business studies, computer studies, electrical engineering, entrepreneurship, hospitality, and mechanical engineering. All these um, give the impression of... Uh, of a lot more of the applied kind of courses, you know, the, the kind of practical courses. Yes. How important are these courses to the economy and to the current job market? Uh, that is what the Kenya, our economy needs. We need managers, a few of them who are trained by, in our universities. Mm -hmm. But you, we also need people who do the actual jobs. Mm -hmm. A carpenter who will make a table a carpenter who will do the, the roofing and the ceiling mm -hmm. of the buildings that we are, that we are doing. Mm -hmm. And you, you realize that our, our building industry is growing very fast. Mm -hmm. We need skilled people. Mm -hmm. But what has been happening is that most of us, most of our students have been rushing to go to universities, mm -hmm. of course, to become managers. Mm -hmm. But a manager needs a whole team to manage. Mm -hmm. So without the skilled manpower mm -hmm. that we are developing at, uh, at PC Kinyanjui mm -hmm. and in other technical institutions, mm -hmm. we'll end up having so many graduates mm -hmm. who have nobody to manage. Mm -hmm. And so they'll remain jobless mm -hmm. as our young people also go without skills. Mm -hmm. And we can only perform poorer mm -hmm. as an economy. Right. So the skills are highly required. When you look at the, um, the, the whole subject of the big four, Yes. the agenda uh, mm -hmm. pushed by our president uh, as, as one of the things that Kenya needs to move to the next level yes. as a country. Mm -hmm. When you look at Big Four, where mm -hmm. do you see yourself as a teacher, as a head of an institution, mm -hmm. and as one of the people championing a new wave of young Kenyans with new, uh, and, and, and from what you say, marketable skills? Where do you see f yourself and these people that you lead fitting into the whole uh, dynamic mm -hmm. of the Big Four? We fit in all the, all the four agenda, mm -hmm. but specifically mm -hmm. and more critically mm -hmm. in, the, in the housing. Housing, okay. Yes, we are training carpenters. Mm -hmm. 
We are training electrical engineers. Mm -hmm. We are training plumbers. Mm -hmm. All those will fit into the into the building industry. Mm -hmm. So we, we fit in the training aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But not we don't do just the training, we also do production. Mm -hmm. We have some state-of-the-art equipment oh. that has been supplied by the government. Uh -huh. So that, uh, that equipment can be used for production of items. I would like yes. to see a situation where we're buying Kenyan products. Let's say, for example, a, a, a vast majority of, of the courses that you offer yes. are, like you said, practical. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have application, like you say, in the building and construction industry. Mm -hmm. Are we likely to see a situation where we walk, on, walk into a hardware or, or a building supplies uh, shop or store and yes. we find a majority of the product uh, as Kenyan, manufactured by Kenyans, and, 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 and that you know, is what should of happen. Quality. That is what should happen. But is that the reality on the ground right now? Not the reality uh, as we are talking. And what would it take for but us to as get we, there? But as we talk, yeah. the government is busy providing state of the art equipment. Uh -huh. Like PC Kinyanjui has been supplied with mechanical engineering mm -hmm. equipment mm -hmm. worth hundreds of millions of shillings, mm -hmm. both computerized and manual. Mm -hmm. So, once we are through with the training phase, which will be over by the end of, by the end of this year, mm -hmm. so that our, our staff are trained on how to utilize that equipment, right. then we should see products from technical training institutes, mm -hmm. proudly labeled, made in PC Kinyanjui Technical Training Institute. Right. That is yeah. coming. We're looking at uh, nations, uh, if you look at the, some of the most technologically advanced nations on earth. Yes. We're looking at Japan, we're looking at China, Singapore, Malaysia, and, 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 and the rest. Mm -hmm. many, many of them from the Asian um, side, part of the world and a few others from the Western part of the world. Mm -hmm. You see technology playing a very big role in that kind of growth. We yes. see uh, a lot of the, the training institutions spearheading not just research, but manufacturing <laughs> and innovation. Yes. Where do you see your institution and other institutions of a similar kind in Kenya in, 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 in the whole conversation of helping Kenya get to those levels? For a long time, I think we took the wrong, we took the wrong route mm -hmm. so that we didn't, uh, we didn't take the, give them the technical training, mm -hmm. the priority it deserves. Mm -hmm. But this time round, mm -hmm. the government has gotten it right. Mm -hmm. They are expanding the, the capacity mm -hmm. by building new technical training institutions. Mm -hmm. They are providing the most modern equipment mm -hmm. in various institutions. Some of us have been equipped with the mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. others woodworking machines, mm -hmm. others electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. And so this time round, we have gotten it right. Mm -hmm. It is just a question of time mm -hmm. and a very short time mm -hmm. before you see institutions manufacturing items, okay. items that can be availed in the market. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other question as well uh, of, of, of the fast pace of mm -hmm. technology and innovation. Uh, for example, um, I can see like you've introduced, you, and you did say this in your introduction, you said you've introduced um, agricultural courses yes. in, in, you know, in your school. Mm. Um, if you look at the trends in modern agriculture, a lot of it deals with mechanization. Yes. A lot of um, uh, new and innovative plows or, or tillers or, mm. you know, and such like uh, equipment is being generated. So there's a lot of innovation in that aspect. Do you feel perhaps that we are playing catch up to the rest of the world and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that we, we are teaching our, our, our people skills that may be obsolete or techniques that may be obsolete in the next 10 or 20 years and not ex really preparing them for the world of tomorrow, which is today. In the it state. is an unfortunate reality <laughs> that is, as of now, we are playing catch up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I believe now that we have started and we are doing the right thing, mm -hmm. it may take time. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, not five, not ten years mm -hmm. before we, we are the leaders. Mm -hmm. But I believe in the next five years, mm -hmm. we should be equal. Mm -hmm. Then maybe after some, some more ten years, mm -hmm. some countries, mm -hmm. maybe not the developed countries, right. will now be playing catch up. Uh -huh. I expect our East African countries now right. will be playing catch up and they will be looking at Kenya as a benchmark. Mm -hmm where they will be getting their, they will be borrowing technology from. Okay. So that is coming. Okay. 
Let me shift gears a yes. little bit and, and, and maybe just talk about you as a person. Yes. Um, you've, been, you've, been, you've been a teacher for, for, for decades. For 30, 30, for 30 years. years. At least 30 years. Yes. And, and, and the question I want to ask you is this. What is the secret for longevity in this career? What is it that, that keep, keeps giving you the energy? Where do you recharge? And, and what is it that you recharge yourself with to keep giving out? Because teaching is, is essentially an, a, a, a profession uh, in which you give of yourself, of your mm. knowledge, mm. and of your skills and insights to um, a, a, a large group of people. Yes. How do you keep recharging? Why do you keep going on 30 years down the line and you're still going on? And I'm about to go on even more. Probably retire in teaching. Wow. Yeah. Why and how? Was at 60. At 60? Yes. Why and how? Um, my main motivation mm -hmm. and joy is to see, to see young people mm -hmm. growing to become responsible, responsible citizens. Mm -hmm. every, every time you see a trainee or you meet a trainee whom you were with mm -hmm. three, four, five years ago, and see him doing well, mm -hmm. a good number of them much better mm -hmm. than you are doing yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You feel, you get that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That is what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. Because every other year, mm -hmm. and as you grow in teaching, mm -hmm. you get more and more people who have become even more important, mm -hmm. more important than you are. Mm -hmm. And you can really be proud and say, this is my product. But sometimes it gets make. difficult. It gets difficult. It gets wary. Sometimes the parents or the society do not understand, or they mm. may attack and criticize. We've seen a lot of that, you know, in the, you know, uh, directed at teachers. How do you maintain perspective? How do you mm. retain your optimism and your your desire to impart the next generation? Human beings are generally fair. When you do the right job, they will always appreciate. You may not miss one or two cases right. or people who will, never, who will never appreciate what you are doing. Mm -hmm. But that is a small and very small minority. Mm -hmm. I always believe that when you see a person being criticized mm -hmm. by two, three people, year in, year out, mm -hmm. there must be something you are doing wrong. Okay. I've been a teacher all these years. Mm -hmm. I've taught in high school. Mm -hmm. I've taught in college as a teacher, as a head of department, as a registrar, as a deputy principal, mm -hmm. and in all those, those positions, and now as a principal. Mm -hmm. But I have received a lot of appreciation mm -hmm. when I have done the right thing. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can remember one or two cases, mm -hmm. but very few. Otherwise, the society is generally very fair. If you they always the right appreciate thing. you when you have done the right thing. Uh -huh. But when you don't again, mm -hmm. they'll say it and say it much louder <laughs> than they said when you are doing the when right thing. Right but that is, that is life. That is life. Everything cannot be just straight mm -hmm. and uh, rosy for you. Right. But to a large extent, uh, the society is fair. Right. Yes. Now, I, I want you to cast back and, and look at, um, generally, a lot, of, a lot of Kenyans go through about two decades of, of learning mm -hmm. before they get into the job market. Yes. So let's assume that uh, that to be the average and then add on to that your 30 years of experience mm -hmm. as a teacher. Mm -hmm. How have you seen education in Kenya change and where would you project this change or this direction to be or to be heading to in the future? Uh, we have, I've seen a lot of, a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. I've seen new ways of new ways of teaching coming up, mm -hmm. syllabuses and curriculums being reviewed every other every other time, mm -hmm. and I think every other day mm -hmm. we are seeking to improve to improve our system. Mm -hmm. I remember the system I went through, mm -hmm. especially in class when I was being taught literacy, mm -hmm. and I I look at the way the nursery the primary school teachers mm -hmm. are doing their work. Today. They are doing it totally differently. Mm -hmm. Because for us, I, you are given fi alphabets mm -hmm. and you are supposed to cram them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know by, what, by whatever magic we manage to, to have them in our heads and remember them. Right. But this time I see them doing it in a more friendly way. Mm -hmm. That a child can be able to know the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Like they say, ah, mm -hmm. it, we would be told A, B, C and, and right. all that. Right. 
and without it making sense, mm -hmm. you are just told, you, are, you had to cram it. Right. But this time I, I find them teaching sounds. Uh -huh. I'm not good at that, but I, but I find it more, more friendly mm -hmm. to a learner. What about it, the future, the future of education? Uh, we'll, we'll continue playing catch up mm -hmm. for, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Because even those new methods that we are applying in our primary schools are also borrowed from, mm -hmm. from the Western countries. Mm -hmm. But the more, we, the more we invest in research, mm -hmm. We'll be able now to come up with Kenyan, Kenyan ways Unique of doing it. Approaches. The the biggest improvement is actually where I am at the moment, anyway. Right. In technical education, mm -hmm. we have for a long time we have been having mm -hmm. very old. Like I have some machines that were made in the 70s, uh -huh. and I am still using them to to this day. to train to uh -huh. to this day. Right. Fortunately, they were so durable. <laughs> but then the technology has been overtaken by events by so events. much. Right. But now from starting from last year, mm -hmm. the government is equipping us with the most modern modern equipment. So the future is bright. You can imagine red machines uh -huh. that are computerized. Right. So I have to decide I want a bolt of this shape. Mm -hmm. I got put it in a computer. Mm -hmm. Then the the com the machine is able to produce that an identical bolt wow. and do so many of them wow identical wow so that is where we are at the moment and so we have come from very far uh -huh. we are still moving slowly by slowly we are playing catch up right but not for not forever not forever not yes. for too long hopefully not too long now my director tells me we are entirely out of time okay but i would not want to let you go without you telling us just a few more things first of all malimu when you're not in the classroom when you're not teaching when you're when you're not heading the institution that you are inspiring all those lives and mm -hmm. trying to change the future what do you do to relax how do you relax mm -hmm. in your spare time uh i visit places uh -huh. you like to travel yes yeah. do you like I don't music? mind once in a while <laughs> To right. go out of out of Nairobi and relax. Right. So that is one thing I do. All right. I also do a lot of a lot of community work, ah, right. particularly as a church as a church leader. Uh -huh. Right. I'm a church leader and I have done it also for quite some time. Right. I am a church elder mm -hmm. of the Presbyterian Church. Right. So I spend a lot of a lot of my free time. During, uh, doing, church activities. doing church activities, right, right? Attending meetings, meeting the youth now outside the school, right? Outside the disciplined. So you never, you never stop impacting the lives of young people. Do when you? it comes to the youth, I'm ever there. <laughs> That's your passion. Either in in school, <laughs> in the church, right. in the streets, right? And wherever I go. To. Malimu, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And may God bless you and give you strength to do more of what you're doing. Thank you very much.